This is the last video that I'm making in this session for the Rhetorical Quest. This is the end of the Rhetorical Quest public speaking lecture series. And I may go back at some point and add some videos in. I may go back and take some out that really didn't go so well. Uh, and there may, may be changes. One of the neatest things about what we can do with technology is how easy it is to change things. And hopefully, over time, I can make some improvements. Uh, this is uh, the production values of these videos. is not what I wish they could be, but you know, there's some really exciting things. This final video of our rhetorical quest public speaking lecture series, we're going to deal briefly with communication and media. In order to really understand that, we should understand some words dealing with media. Media is a plural word. It means there is more than one. If there is one, it is a medium. If you saw something on television, you didn't see it in the media, you saw it in a medium. If you saw it in television, on, in the newspaper, uh, on the internet, and listened to it on the radio, then you heard it in media. Multiple media. More than one is media. One is a medium. Multiple are media. And communication that passes through a medium is mediated. So I'm going to use all of those words as we talk about this. When we think about the media, a lot of times we think about the effects that media have on us. And we think about those effects and we think about uh, the ways in which usually our concerns are about sex and violence. And here's what I want you to understand. See, there are multiple effects for media. And we really are affected by media. You know what I think you could do? I think you could stop this video right now. And you're on YouTube watching it. Choose another video for maybe a chicken sandwich. Watch it. And there is a chance, although it's not a big chance, but a chance, that after you watch a video advertising a chicken sandwich, maybe a restaurant's video, you will be hungry for a chicken sandwich. That's a micro-level effect. The micro-level effect is you see something and you immediately have a change in behavior. And that is not likely. See, what's more likely is that after you've watched a bunch of advertisements telling you about chicken sandwiches, next time you go into a restaurant that sells them, you might consider buying a chicken sandwich. See, that's the macro level effect. And there are both. See, we worry about sex and violence in the media, but we generally think we're immune ourselves. Because, you know, you'll watch an episode of Jersey Shore and you don't go out sleep with all the people in your apartment building. Uh, you go and you watch the the latest action movie, and you don't jump out and kill people. No, you don't. Just like most of the time, when you watch a, ch uh, watch a commercial for a chicken sandwich, you don't jump up and rush out to the restaurant and buy one. Here's the thing, though. In those, there are still macro-level effects. You're not going to jump out and kill somebody. But when you're in a confrontational situation, you may consider a violent option. You may not go around sleeping with all of your, uh, all the people you know. But when you're in that position, it may be more likely that you'll make that decision. That's the macro level effects. There are also differences in administrative and critical effects. The administrative effect is the effect that your media wants. In this case, with these videos, you know what I want? I want you to learn to be a good communicator. Specifically, I want you to be a good public speaker. Uh, but I want you, in general, to be a good communicator. That's what I want. You may be watching this and experiencing all kinds of critical effects. I know, I watched these videos, and I realized at one point I had a shirt that was tucked in on one side and not on the other. And 
in the end, I decided the information I was giving in the video was so important that I wasn't going to worry about it. Uh, I wouldn't have time to reshoot the whole thing anyway. I just let it go. You might have been making fun of my clothes. That might have been what you were doing in the video. Who knows? That would be a critical effect, right? The administrative effect, I want you to learn to be a good communicator. The critical effect, you might not like my beard. You might be making fun of my beard. Or maybe you love my beard. And you think this is a wonderful thing. We finally got somebody here with a beard. Either way, the beard is irrelevant to what I'm talking about. But you are creating a critical effect. Uh, you are critically thinking about the video and moving beyond just what I'm saying about it. Here's the thing. There is not a magic bullet as far as media goes. I can't write the right book, make the right article, send you to the right web page, or make you watch the right video that will turn you into a great speaker. Hopefully, though, there can be more of a ritual effect. As we hear about different kinds of good, good researching and, and good... Uh, good communication. As I expose you to some of that, uh, and then you expose yourself to it in other ways, maybe overall you can ultimately develop into a good communicator. Okay, so we've got these effects, and we know media affect us. And so you think, well, so what? Well, one big concern with our media effects is that fewer and fewer people are owning the mass media. A.J. Liebling very famously said that the uh, freedom of the press belongs only to him who owns one. <laughs> well, he owned one, but there are fewer and fewer people who do. See, there's something that happened. Over the last 20 years, the people who own the, the major media have all steadily decreased in number. They've been buying each other up left and right. When I was a kid in the 1980s, there were about 20 companies that owned newspapers, uh, ma big, chunk, big newspapers, uh, television stations, uh, internet was not a deal then, but radio. Uh, there were about there were about 20 companies that owned all the big com all the big media outlets. Now there are five. There's Disney. There's Viacom. There's News Corp. Uh, there's Sony uh, with General Electric, and I can't remember the fifth one. But you know what? I'll put it up there on the screen. I'll, I'll look it up and make a slide. Uh, but there are five. Uh, and so, anyway, there, there are five media companies working right now. That's scary. Because if, since there are these media effects, and it really comes down to five people, the CEOs of these countries, who ultimately decide which effects they want to have on us. And this scared me for a long time. I considered it to be one of the scariest things happening in our society. But then a few years ago, I started to notice something. The students in my, in my classes were giving increasingly uh, technical visual aids. I used to talk about visual aids, and I would talk about how there are three-dimensional visual aids, like uh, a statue or a model you might bring in, and two-dimensional visual aids, which would be, you know, a poster board, was basically what I was thinking. Now our two-dimensional visual aids tend to come in two parts. There are analog visual aids, that poster board that I used to talk about, maps, charts, stuff like that. And there are also digital visual aids. And I started to notice that a lot of my students were a lot more savvy about their digital visual aids. Some of them realized that there's a difference in the way color works. Go ahead and Google uh, reflected color versus projected color. And you'll see what I mean. Totally different pro uh, primary colors. And they were very good at putting things on the screen. I noticed there were students who were making whole videos just for the background as their visual aid. What I was witnessing 
was something new happening. The major media, it's true, are controlled by just a few people. But technology and what we call the Web 2.0 phenomena has turned us not just into media consumers, but also media producers. If A.J. Liebling is right, and the freedom of the press belongs to he who owns one, well, now it would be he or she who owns one, and we all can own one. I'm producing these videos. I made these videos, uh, the entire Rhetorical Quest uh, public speaking lecture series. Uh, part of the reason you'll see that the production values are kind of low is I made them over the course of about a week, mostly in my office, mostly using a $5 webcam. Those little ones that I did in my house, I made those using my PlayStation, a game device. I can produce media, and so can you. So there's a few things I want you to get out of my little discussion of communication and media. I know it was kind of wide-ranged. First of all, there are critical and um, transmissional effects uh, and, and, and administrative effects. There are things they want you to feel it to happen and then that's what you actually do. There are micro and macro level effects. The micro level, you know what? It's not the biggest thing to worry about but the macro level are. I want you to understand that as you give your public speeches you have a lot of choices in your visual aids. And I want you to understand that um, that there's you know micro and macro transmission of it. You can do this in your visual aids. And what that means is that you are no longer just a consumer of media, but a producer of it. So if the media is not doing something that you think is of adequate quality, if you think there's too much sex, too much violence, too much rough language in the media, it's your job now to produce that media. I hope some of the public speaking skills you've developed throughout this course are going to give you the tools to start to go into that. Uh, if you are taking this as part of an online course, hopefully you were required to make videos of your speeches. And so that's really exciting, and I really am excited about what you can do. Go ahead and take those videos and put them out on YouTube. Go ahead and share them with the world. Become part of the media.